And this is the most popular size for collectors who want to have a wide range of cars. Probably a lot of people who are in the RC community is Kyosho. The brand is called Mark 43. Now this is actually made by a company called Hobby Japan. Resin models, 118 scale, which are much more highly detailed than the diecast models. Now look at that, the steering wheel. Now another company that we want to feature is called Ignition Models. Very excitingly for 90s JDM fans. You can get anything, it's not just sports cars. Is that the latest Corvette Stingray? If you're a fan of uh, European Herpa, RX3 Savannas, Australian style rotary colors, the Rally New Zealand 1995, Thailand touring car. Initially fans rejoice you have a nice range of the latest official um, animation legend. Hi guys and welcome to another episode of JDM Masters and on today's shop reviews we'll be taking a look at Hiko 7 but they're not really a real car tuner but for those of you who love cars you might also be collectors of scale models or specifically die cast models and this is a shop that specializes completely in cars racing cars and it's located not so far from Tokyo and we're going to go and have a look inside so come join us So let's go have a look inside. And as you enter, you're immediately surrounded by this glass shelves stacked right up to the ceiling um, on both sides. And it's just filled with model cars and 143 scale, 164 scale, which is the very popular sizes for collectors. And they also even have 118 scale uh, from various makers, auto art and some of the classic models, latest models. And it's just really astounding to see a shop that specializes uh, completely in cars. And it really reflects on the owner's concept of aiming at car enthusiasts um, like you and me and us. Uh, or those of you guys who are watching, of course, uh, you love cars and you may be a collector of small cars. You know, if you own a specific uh, sports car and you want to get that model, maybe in the same color. And um, this is basically uh, heaven for car collectors and also car enthusiasts. So let's have a look around at the selection. So generally in die cast model collection, uh, you have three generic sizes, uh, small, medium, large, but more specifically uh, 164 scale, which is uh, very compact and collectible. You can arrange this on your table very easily. And this is the most popular size for collectors who want to have a wide range of cars. And the good news is that now you can have really highly detailed 164 scale cars, um, especially from Hobby Japan, but also Tommy Tech, which is a company of Tommy, and they also make 164 scale highly detailed models, and they're still releasing new models. And lately, they've been going into 90s JDM cars, as you can see here. The Lancer Evolution 6 is a new model that's just released, um, but they are limited to uh, once run and so that's why they call limited and you have to get those uh, if you don't get a new uh, you'll probably find them on a the second-hand market and like real cars sometimes the price does rise up the other more popular model size that people collect is the 143 scale it's slightly bigger and you can put it in your palm of your hand and usually comes with a box and this is an example of the mark 43 initial D a86 uh, Takumi Fujiwara's model and as you can see here how highly detailed even with the wheels uh, the decals on the side the windows uh, with all the lines they also have a metal etch plate uh, that gives you the design of the actual font of the original car but also the series so um, this is a really good scale for uh, major collectors 
And you also have the 118 scale, which is very popular. Um, these days you can buy resin models, uh, 118 scale, which are much more highly detailed than the die cast models. Now, a lot of you may collect Auto Art, which was a company started uh, more than 20 years ago. And you could open the doors, you could open the bonnet and the trunk and have the engine detail. But there's still some lacking in overall realism to the real car. So that's what these resin models are for. You can't open anything, but the lines between the bonnet and the fenders, for example, and just that little detail uh, with the wheels, with the, the light, it's much more realistic representation of the real car. Uh, most collectors will just leave the model on their desk or inside their showcase. So there's no real need to you know, open up and see but the devil is in the details. And looking inside this 118 resin scale, uh, you can see the little, little details that reflect on the real car. And this is an Integra DC5 Type R, for example. And you can see the Hilbercaro seats, the shape, uh, the coloring, the lettering on the seats. But also, maybe you can see the interior, I'm not sure, through here. Now look at that, the steering wheel. Uh, the dashboard, the instrument cluster, the shape, and even the color, the matte coloring of the dashboard highly reflects the actual car. The only sad part is underneath, there's, there's not much detail at all. But anyway, you're not going to pick up the model once you put it in your showcase and look underneath it. But as a display model, it's a fantastic representation. So we're going to be having a look at specific small models now, and just to um, explain uh, the amount of details. So first off, we have a new company, the 143 scale, highly detailed die cast, uh, a little bit expensive. The brand is called Mark 43. Now this is actually made by a company called Hobby Japan. A little background story. Hobby Japan is actually a long running Japanese magazine that features die cast models uh, from Japanese and foreign makers. And they are very popular with uh, the enthusiasts who want to collect these things. But finally, they said, let's make models. Let's make the best 143 scale, highly detailed models. And since there's a revival of 90s and 80s JDM cars, um, they went full scale into it. And this is an example of the range that we're going to show you later on. NSX Type R NA2 2002. This goes for about 100 US dollars. Um, you might think, wow, that's a bit expensive, but it's very, very, very well worth it. Of course, all of these cars have full support from the manufacturer. It's official Honda licensed product. Um, and what this means is uh, the manufacturer actually approves or disapproves and gives feedback on the details of the car. They supply them uh, with the exact font for the, for the logos, for example, the shape um, of the of of the brand name and such. Now, another company that we want to feature is called Ignition Models. Now, the story goes that the uh, designers uh, that who came from the HBI company went and start their own company called IG Models, Ignition Models. And this is based in Shizuoka, Ken. Also very, very high grade maker of 164 scale. And you can see they've gone for a different approach. This is the top secret R35 GTR uh, model car. So they've worked together with the most famous tuners um, and to reproduce their demo cars. And this is something that's not been done before. And uh, a real joy for collectors um, who want to have 3D scale model of their favorite uh, tuned JDM cars that you can see in videos and in Option magazine. This is fantastic. Uh, fully supported by also by Nissan themselves. It's a Nissan official licensed product and a top secret official licensed product. Now, let's just go a little bit into licensing for them for a moment. Yeah. As you can see here, we have RWB as well, and a TSM model, which is not a Japanese model. So this is a race car. And most race cars are, are really troublesome to get all the sponsors uh, for the, uh, all the different stickers, or even from the team itself. A smaller tuning company like this is probably easy to get a license, but there are some non-Japanese companies uh, which actually neglect or don't go to the trouble to get the full licensing support 
from uh, the maker, whether it's a car maker or whether it's a tuna maker. But for Japanese companies, they take great care to make sure that they get the licenses, otherwise uh, they're not going to produce the models at all. Another company I'd like to introduce to probably a lot of people who are in the RC community is Kyosho. And they've been producing models for a very long time. Uh, their rival, uh, Ebro, uh, produced many models in the 90s to the early 2000s. But they were somehow lackluster, lacking in a lot of detail of the shape of the, of the headlights, whereas the overall shape of the body up. We've personally collected these cars ourselves and I've always felt mm, it's a bit lacking. I wish there would be a high grade model that looks exactly like the real car. And Kyosho has also stepped up their game into uh, the, the more premium market. Now this is an interesting example of the GRB hatchback STI uh, rally demo car. And uh, there's a lot of interesting uh, hidden models that a lot of people do not know about. Okay, so now we're going to look at the details of some of these models. So, very excitingly for 90s JDM fans, Subaru Impreza WRX STI version 3 Type R. The version 3 was the first model to get the two-door variation. It's interesting that they chose this to start with. And um, of course, they made the more popular version 5s later on. But they have most of the colors that are, are appear new in the catalog, but also this one here appears to be a little bit tuned. You can see that's not a stock exhaust right there. Um, it's lowered a little bit, but maybe this is the appearance that, um, that people would actually like to do to the real car. So it's not completely stock. Let's have a closer look at the details. Now let's have a look at the front mask. Very realistic looking, isn't it? If you look at the headlights, and you can see that the inside, which is usually in low detail in cheaper models, uh, is highly reflected in even the little lines uh, of the early 90s models. Black painting outside and the, the, the etching of the emblem and also the small details of the decals on the fog light covers. Now turning it to the side here, this is where the GC8 Impreza uh, gets its distinctive shape. If you look at the curvature of the front headlights. It's very, very accurate. And looking at also the overall body line shape, it looks very accurate to me. Uh, I know the GC8 Impreza quite well. I've had one before and the C pillar going down into the boot has a slight angle going down. It's clearly reflected here. The height and the shape of the rear wing, even the thickness is thin, uh, reflecting the real car and the Real tail lights also in the same fashion. You have the orange inside and the WRX STI logo down there. Wheels, that's not stock wheels. That's, that, that probably looks like Speedline wheels from the 90s, which reflects the WRC heritage. Another shape, it's done very, very well. The gentle curve that comes from the A pillar to the roof. The roof is slightly curved. Although oddly, the wheels look like they're a bit larger than 15 inch. And in the front, you can see that the headlights are a little bit recessed, but there is a reason for that. When model designers make a scale model of a car, they have to consider many, many different things. Now, for example, for those of you who actually make plastic models of cars, more popular one, 24 scale, uh, Tamiya, Aoshima, uh, Hasegawa, and also Fujimi. Uh, will notice that there are slight distortions on the body, especially with Tamiya cars, and it's no different from a smaller scale 143. And the reason is this, when you stand in front of a real car, you're looking at it at eye level. The car is actually a lot bigger than yourself. So your eyes actually distort the real image of the car depending on the angle that you're looking at. Now, if you don't believe me, take out your smartphone and stand about two or three meters away from the car at eye level and you can see by moving it up and down like this, it gets distorted. But when you're dealing with a very small scale model, which is usually viewed from above this way, the designers actually do consider uh, how to make the car appear real when you're looking at it from the top. So there are slight distortions and I'm noticing on this EG6, very, very slight depressions inside the headlights but when it's put on a table like this it looks real it looks exactly like the real thing 
red color uh, for your initial leaf fans. You know, you know what reference this is. Lancer Evolution 3 uh, on the table. Just gonna rotate it around a little bit and you can see for yourself the high detail in this model. The height of the wing is usually something that um, scale models in the past uh, weren't able to do well. The black lines uh, that represent the molding on the roof uh, to the slight depression of the rear glass purposely made deeper than in a real car to give you that impression that it's like a real car where there's actually a slight bump to show the moldings and also more importantly the rear wing it's made very thin but also that reflects the scale of the real car and very famous tuning car a demo the demo car of mines uh, appeared in Gran Turismo an option uh, this is made by Ignition model I'll be like this leather uh, top plate and it gives it very very exclusive feel and you can see here how the R34 is very difficult to represent um, headlights and the slight nuance of the front grille coming out over here. The, the GTR emblem is impressively 3D looking and it's, it's not a sticker at all. It's actually a proper looking piece with the colors and each vent is carefully cut out uh, without any uh, unnecessary uh, recess. So this is our die cast model. This is super, so impressive how um, they've taken also great care in the decals, uh, which is from the real demo car, the mines, uh, font, uh, the, the lines, and each sticker that's also on the real car. And looking inside, this is where cheaper models uh, fall flat. The shape of the wheels, uh, the spokes, and the way the tires are actually uh, attached to the wheels and inside the brake calipers and the, and the brake discs themselves. This looks impressively real. A lot of the problem with the cheaper models is the brake is actually too far inside. Looking from the side, that looks, that looks real, doesn't it? So let's look around the shop and all the selection that they have. Starting from right at the door is where we are really interested in. JDM cars these days have been getting a huge revival and that's why Kyosho Ignition and Hobby Japan have been producing a lot of the favorites from the 80s and the 90s. Now, of course, if you're watching this video, you may be wondering, how do I get these cars? Hiko 7 has a website, which you can see in the link, and you're able to order a lot of these cars. And now, unfortunately, due to the COVID-19 situation, uh, it may take a little bit of time um, to get to wherever you're living. Uh, maybe it's in Australia or America, uh, but for those of you in Asia, maybe we might be able to get it uh, a little sooner. Or if you do happen to come to Japan, um, it's actually not too far away from Tokyo. A train ride on the Tokaido line, as you're going down towards the beach, uh, you stop in a place called Ofuna. It's just a uh, 600 meter walk, and you can come here and enjoy and browse through this fantastic selection of car models. So let's have a little bit of a look around Covered here, we see Mark 43, um, you got the 90 to $100 range, a uh, range in order of manufacturing Honda, 80s Hondas, you have the 90s Hondas here. Oh, we're liking this EF9, oh, that's the EF3, sorry, uh, non VTEC, and then the EF, this is, the, oh, wow, this is the AAT. Interesting how this one has the Kanjo Zoku style uh, rear wing, original NSX as well. There's an NSX Type R variation. Taking the care to also replicate the exact font of the logo according to the time and of the, of the model and great name as well. This is the Honda Accord Inspire, a JDM model which you'll never see on the road these days. Um, it's somewhere between a Legend and an Accord size. It's just a bigger size. First Mugen full body kit car. Uh, that's actually the first version. There are many versions of this, but we're liking how the carbon fiber matte print is also very, very impressively uh, done for the Mark 43. Mazda fans will delight in the Spirit R Type A, uh, the last and final edition of the FD3S. There would be K car fans in Japan who would just want a high grade model of their daily grocery getter K car. Very interesting. RX-8 fans maybe, or if you want to go back a little bit further, you can get the FC-3S finished in 
green. Oh, this one's interesting. I just noticed this right now. My goodness, the vehicle ID number. It looks like this model was actually taken and modeled after an actual car with that exact chassis code and uh, serial number. Oh, that's crazy. Hondas again, more shuttle four-wheel drive. Um, not really sure why it's there, but they're definitely going to be fans of this. The BB4, um, Honda, you have the Accord, Accord wagon from back in the day. And over here, more Subarus. And the same WRX STI Type R. You have the newer ones. Also, this is my high story. Is another another maker moving down. Ooh, Nissan fans will love this Hakoska GTR, the coupe model, which is finished in in brilliant white. Nismo S Tune R32 GTR, also finished in high detail. Notice how the front lights are very very well done uh, the coloring of the side markers very very accurate um, more more nissan stuff over here as well um, anybody knows this this is a leopard which is a jdm uh, coupe model of the cifero look at this oddity here does anyone know what this is it's a corolla fx it's a hatchback of a corolla with a 4ag engine and you can see here corolla fx very interesting um, great font. New Supra A90 for those of you who like the new car or you want to go all the way back to the first model which is the 2000 GT and they've taken even the uh, in initiation to put this on a classic looking kind of cork or maybe this represents a mar kind of marble uh, road just to give it that kind of like classic feel. Supra A80 fans rejoice you can have a very nice model. Uh, Supra Ski uh, who appeared in our video of the A80 Supra. You need to get this. Or if you're a Chaser fan, here you go. The only time I'm going to see a stock model uh, or car is in a model, not in a real car. <laughs> it's going to be interesting. Now let's go further down to another maker called High Story, uh, which is, I believe, it's not a Japanese model maker, but it also has the approval of the maker. Here you can see here, Toyota Corporation. So they make not sports car models. There are at a much cheaper price range. Actually, it's not that much cheap. It's still $98. So you've got the first Celsius, and you can see here how you have a whole range of the catalog of Toyota. You have the Alphards, you have a Land Cruiser, you have a Noah, which are all mundane bread and butter models. Like, why would you want a model of your minivan? But there are fans of these, and that's what's fantastic about uh, the diecast model car world. You can get anything. It's not just sports cars. 400R, Yan, if you're listening, maybe you want one of these. I don't know. Old Datsun trucks. I'm just going crazy here looking at this. The shop does carry foreign brands. As you can see, First 43, which is a European-made brand of um, a variety of different cars as well. Oddities here, like a early 2003 Mitsubishi Grandis minivan, a three... 3000 so it's $30, and you can see immediately how the detail is lacking compared to the higher-end models. But if you just want something cheap, um, that's the way to go. Is that the latest Corvette Stingray? Yeah. The mid-engine one, right? See. That's fantastic, the C8. But um, motorsports fan will rejoice when you can find the NSX GT3 and a lot of GT3 uh, race car models in different kinds of livery. And if you're a fan of uh, European, Herpa, those of you in Europe who live here will be familiar with his German maker, BMW M4 Coupe. Astounding variety of every kind of major 143 scale maker. Cheaper models here, Oversteer, uh, Kyosho, which makes very impressive looking 164 scale of the new NSX, for example. Moving down here, um, more Kyoshos of classic RX3 Savannas, um, finished in Australian style rotary colors. You can imagine that from Rotary magazine. Uh, very impressive looking. Over here is Eno 64, which is a, I believe is a, a brand from Hong Kong. Uh, not too sure if they have the full um, licensing, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You can get your hands on one of these. They're quite limited. They look like the race cars of old, and there's a lot of very obscure models which no one's ever heard of, like Rally New Zealand 1995, Thailand touring car. Japan Touring Car, um, Macau Grand Prix, 
Southeast Asian, so Asian fans will love this range. This is impressive. So you got the Lancer Evolution 4, GSR road model, and this is the Rally Group A demo car. It doesn't have the stickers uh, like in Tommy Mackinnon's 1997 winner. Uh, this is actually the first Rally Art issued demo car. And uh, I have a, a bit of history with this, so it's quite personal for me. But over here is where I want to draw your attention to the Tomica Limited Range. Uh, 164 scale, and there's some interesting models here, like the Sunburst Yellow. I'm not going to open this up. Uh, FD3S. Uh, this is interesting. This is a Group A patterned um, Civic SR EF9. Double the price. I'm not sure before it's limited. And if you check on the website over here, Tomica has their complete range of their new models. You've got an R32 normal model, you have the Evo 4RS, you have some old police cars, old Cedric, uh, EF9, and even some like, what is this? A Fiat Panda, original one. There are a lot of Japanese fans who love these cars, actually, that's the reason why they're being made. Japanese more fans, you can see, and you probably, you know, get this one. Um, you can also have a two. 35, 20, 20, all this different range. And Tarmac Works down here, which is also a Hong Kong company, and they produce a lot of the classic uh, race cars that raced in Macau, specifically WTCR. Just a huge, huge range. Here's the interesting range. Lexus models, LC500. Lexus commission uh, these cars to be made. Uh, they sell it officially in their website, in their range for collectors. Lexus gave full support to make sure that the details of this range is done absolutely accurately and correctly. Um, whereas the difference is other makers um, would just give them like some feedback. But the Lexus range, uh, very much like the Porsche cars, are sold uh, in their catalogs for accessories. Honda NSX Type R, Kyosho, official car back then in 1991 to Suzuka circuit safety cars even if you're interested in, if you guys are interested in that when art and senna was racing safety car of moto gp a lot of obscure different models lancia stratos group five uh, different rally models it's fantastic mine's r33 skyline gtr i do want this one though s204 uh impreza and an eg6 na1 but initially fans rejoice, you have a nice range of the latest official um, animation legend uh, called The Legends. It's, it's a short movie made of uh, FC, FD, and I think you even have the real character, uh, Dale Rama. And here's the A86. $200 made by Kyosho, so it's going to be of great quality. It's a resin model. So now we're going to have a talk with the owner of the hobby shop. Um, Hiko7. Thank you for coming. Thank you very much for having me. Yes. My name is Yukio Harashima. I'm Hiko7 owner. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So I have some questions for Hiroshima san. Um, we're going to ask him about how these wonderful models are made so detailed. Mark 43 とか、いや、実写とリアルカーは本当のそっくりなんですよ。これどうやって作ってるんでしょうか昔はその気型という木を彫り込んでベースを作って金型を彫り込むっていう作り方をしてたんですけど、今はそのあ、本当ですか。え、何そういうそういう3Dスキャンがいつからだいたいいつからこういうあの技術を使ってるんですか。だいたい10年ぐらい前にHPIっていうブランドがあったんですけど、そこら辺がやり始めたのがだいたい最
、まあ、やっぱりデジタルデータがあるのでその覚悟のもともとはその木型なので歪みとかがあるんですけどそういうのがきれいに出るようになったのでよりそういう細かいところまで作り込めるようになってますね。あはいはい、なるほどでこの例えばこの AE86 のモデル見ると例えばそのライトとかえバンパーとか。まずこの全部ハンドメイドで手作りなんですよね。一台ずつ。わあ、wow. That's amazing。Each model is handmade part by part。えっとこのワンモールでどのくらい作るかどのくらい時間かかりますか。うん、だいたいこの四十三分の一のレジンモデルっていうのがだいたい一車車あたり百から三百ぐらいの生産数だと言われて。あなるほどですね,なるほどねいやものすごいあのファンたちがやっぱり90年代と80年代のモデルにも変えるようになった側がいやすごい喜んでるんですよ。<笑>そうですよね。えっとそのあとはこのレジンの118スケールですけれどもこれが同じですか 3D スキャンこれも 3D スキャンです。はこれは海外のオットーというブランドなんですけどそこはもうメーカーの立ち上がりからずっと 3D スキャンで車を作ってるのでああオットの会社がそういうの技術は持ってる上手,です、ね、上手ですねなるほどなるほどいや今日のご説明でありがとうございましたありがとうございました<笑> So we hope you guys have enjoyed that review on model cars and die cast cars. And、um, I'm holding in my hand right now possibly the biggest resid model that they have in this shop. It's a 112 scale、um, NSX Type R, any one 32,000 units, 320.、Um, the NSX R is my dream car, but this is so expensive. I, I can't even afford this one.、Um, so let us know in the comments if you guys would like to, us to review、um, more. Uh, details on diecast cars, or maybe you know,、uh, other shops, and, and if you enjoy this and you like more non real car related stuff, let us know in the comments. And so, until next time, peace out.